Welcome to semi-final number two. This is Werner Heisenberg, represented by Jared Bissett, versus Ernest Rutherford, represented by Sammy Nickel. Uh, they're going to present to you their best case for who is the coolest chemist. You guys get to decide. They're going to do a two-minute presentation on why their chemist is the coolest, and then they have an opportunity to make the other chemist look not cool through questions or points or facts. Are you two ready? I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. Good luck. We're going to have Werner Heisenberg goes first. You have two minutes. Your time <coughs> starts now. So Werner Heisenberg was a German um, chemist, and he did work in physics as well. He helped develop a lot of um, a lot of he, a lot of data, and then basically made the discovery of well, now you know nuclear energy isn't only like a negative thing where you know you've got the nuclear bomb, you've got um, atomic bombs, things like that. Um, if it wasn't for his work, we wouldn't have the positive outcome of nuclear energy, which is, you know, despite the stigma that it has, the cleanest form of uh, energy that there is. Um, and I will take that to the grave. That's that's completely true. And the, the whole nuclear thing that people have a problem with is, it's because, you know, you, a lot of people don't realize that nuclear energy is actually like the cleanest, most efficient way to produce energy. And that's all thanks to Werner Heisenberg. Um, he did work for Germany um, up to World War II, and he did work for Germany during World War II. However, Werner Heisenberg was Jewish enough that he wasn't considered a pure-blooded German, and during his um, time, during the time that the war started, he was taken, uh, I wouldn't say captive, but he was basically told, you can keep working as a scientist for Germany, or we can basically, you know, let everybody know that you're a Jew and you're not going to like the other outcome. So he worked um, in, you know, so he continued his work uh, with Germany and then after the war was over he came to America and did work with other chemists there including chemists like Niels Bohr. He did win the Nobel Prize and was nominated by Albert Einstein and again he was not a Nazi. My main argument there being he was kind of forced to work for the Germans, he was Jewish and um, he was, you know, basically Einstein was German, he was not a Nazi. Heisenberg was German, he was not a Nazi. They both worked during World War II. They both worked for both Germany and America. So that's Fine. Heisenberg. Fine, thank you so very much. <laughs> All right, Ernest Rutherford's turn. Two minutes, present your best case. Why is Ernest Rutherford the coolest chemist? Your time starts now. Okay, so my guy, Sir Ernest Rutherford, the father of nuclear physics, the father of the nuclear age, of the Fathers of Physics, Baron Rutherford of Nelson, President of the Institute of Physics, and nicknamed Crocodile for always looking forward. Rutherford basically started everything that had to do with nuclear age stuff, so like he kind of paved the way for people like Heisenberg to even do their work. Rutherford is the coolest chemist because he contributed a lot to just not only physics and chemistry, but also geology, society, society education, and all of that. And then he, through his gold foil experiment, he was able to determine that there was a nucleus to an atom, so that was a huge breakthrough. He discovered and named alpha and beta rays, along with naming and proving that gamma was a type of x-ray. He set forth the laws of radioactive decay, ultimately giving us carbon dating, which lets us know how old the Earth is. He discovered how to artificially induce a nuclear reaction into this, a stable element. He was the first successful alchemist, because he was the first person to ever turn one element into another. And then he also petitioned for women's rights. And during World War I, he tried to get, instead of using young men to fight on the front lines, he tried to get them in labs to do scientific research. And then he was actually a very peaceful guy. And he tried to, he even said that he hopes that man does not learn how to harness nuclear power until we're at peace with our neighbors. So he was so like against nuclear bombs. So that's not a problem. And then he was very next to Isaac Newton. And he has an element named after him, which is pretty big deal because very few chemists actually have an element named after them. He also has a mineral. He played rugby. He did discover a detector for electromagnetic waves. He founded Rutherford Scattering, and he helped the U.S. with acoustic submarine detection in World War One. That's it. Time. <laughs> yeah. All right. It is now time for cross examination. Um, Rutherford, you may go first. You may ask questions or make statements of fact about your opponent to cast them into a, a negative light. You may start now. Okay, so I have this picture 
um, I don't know if you guys can see it. It's of Heisenberg, and he's next to Heinrich Himmler, which is who was Heinrich. Heinrich Himmler, who was second in command below Hitler. <gasps> oh. And so, oh. and then, oh. Encyclopedia Britannica says. Werner Heisenberg led the Nazi effort to develop the atomic bomb. It seemed unlikely that any harm would have come to him if he would have declined, and that he never seriously contemplated leaving Germany. So, and also if he was just forced into it, why would he work his way up to be so high ranked as to be with the second in command below Hitler? All right. Woo! So, let's hear the response. What is your response, Jared, to this accusation? Oh, this is an accusation. I mean, this is a this is completely true. He worked for Germany. He was a German. If your country called you to go work, you know, you're an American, you have pride in your country, he has pride in his. I mean, something bad was happening in this country at the time. You know, like for example, right now, a lot of the things we're dealing with, with example, like Edward Snowden, the NSA uh, thing, a lot of people are like, oh, is that good, is that bad? Is Edward Snowden a hero? Is Edward Snowden a villain? Well, Edward Snowden, he was a whistleblower for uh, his country's government. Does that mean he hates his country? No, Edward Snowden loves America. He just he saw a problem and he's you know he's dealing with it. That, that you can you can love your country with and not um, agree with how the government is being run. Now Heisenberg, after the uh, war, of course, they'd come to work with America. But yes, during the war, he was working with Germany because he was German. Shocker. All right, thank you very much, Heisenberg. Would you like to um, share anything that puts Ernest Rutherford in a in a negative light? Um. Okay. Well, Ernest Rutherford. He didn't, he didn't do anything bad, he didn't kill anybody, he didn't have any serious things like that. I mean, he, the only thing he's really guilty of is looking like Mr. Chamberlain's dog. <laughs> um, the only thing I could really say about him is he did do a lot of stuff, um, and you did mention that during World War I he worked on sonar um, for submarines. But um, he could have been accredited with basically the invention of modern sonar, and he didn't. And modern sonar saves you know, has saved millions of lives per year with the Coast Guard, the Navy, the the, uh, the Coast Guard, the Navy, and whatnot. And, you know, it's not that he's a bad guy for not putting it out there. I'm just, you know, he could have been the guy that, you know, was, a, was accredited with, oh, I made modern sonar, and I'm the reason that millions of lives are saved every year. But he didn't. And, you know, that's not a bad thing, but he was a good guy. You got nothing bad to say about Ernest Rutherford. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, you two, and good luck to you.